In the heart of the city, among towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, lived a successful financial advisor named Henry Crane. Henry had always been obsessed with money, stocks, and the thrill of financial transactions. His life revolved around numbers, and he had built an empire of clients who trusted him with their fortunes. One crisp autumn evening, as the stock market closed, Henry felt a sense of unease. It began with an email, cryptic in nature, filled with financial jargon that only he could decipher. The sender's name was hidden, and the message contained words like liquidation, penalty clause, and bankruptcy. Henry couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. Days turned into weeks, and the cryptic messages kept coming. His clients seemed to be taunting him with threats of financial ruin, their words growing darker with each passing day. Sleep eluded him, and his once impeccable suits now clung to him like a second skin. Drenched in the sweat of fear, one evening, he decided to escape the relentless messages and retreated to a cabin in the remote woods. The isolation would surely provide him with some peace, he thought. But as he arrived at the cabin, the feeling of unease lingered. The woods were eerily silent, the trees looming like specters in the moonlight. Inside the cabin, Henry couldn't escape the torment of his clients. The financial terms now echoed in his head, mixing with the rustling leaves and the howling wind. He turned on his laptop, hoping to find solace in the numbers that had once been his refuge. Suddenly, the room plunged into darkness. The laptop screen flickered with a sinister message. Bankrupt your soul. Panic seized him as he fumbled for a flashlight, its feeble beam revealing that he was no longer alone. Shadows moved in the corners of the room, and sinister whispers filled the air. His clients, dressed in tattered suits, their faces contorted with greed and rage, surrounded him. They were no longer human. They were specters of the financial world, driven mad by their obsession with wealth. Their eyes glowed with an otherworldly hunger, and they advanced on him their voices merging into a cacophony of torment. Henry stumbled backward, trying to escape their grasp. But the cabin had become a nightmarish labyrinth, its walls shifting and closing in around him. The clients closed in, their spectral fingers reaching for him, whispering financial jargon that pierced his very soul. In his final moments of desperation, Henry's heart pounded like a drum, each beat echoing with terror. His mind raced, searching for answers amid the nightmarish scene that had enveloped him. He tried to reason with the ghostly figures that surrounded him, their spectral forms contorted with a hunger for something beyond the tangible. What is this? Henry cried out, his voice quivering with fear. The clients, now more like wraiths than human beings, hissed their responses. Their words were a twisted tapestry of finance and malevolence. One spoke in a chilling whisper. You were chosen, Henry. Chosen to pay the price for our success. Another chimed in, their voice a haunting blend of agony and greed. You were our sacrifice. The final piece of the puzzle. Henry's mind raced to decipher their cryptic words, and then it hit him like a bolt of lightning. A cult. You're part of some cult, aren't you? This is all for some dark ritual. The clients, or whatever remained of them, grinned in eerie unison. Their eyes glowed with an unholy fervor as they confirmed his dreadful realization. Yes. Offerings, and you were chosen to be that offering. 
Fear surged through him as the cabin's walls seemed to close in tighter. Henry was trapped, both physically and spiritually, his every attempt at escape futile. The cult members closed in, their outstretched hands like the bony claws of demons, eager to deliver him to their dark master. No, please, no, this can't be happening. Henry cried out, his voice breaking with desperation. But it was too late. The cult members, their ghostly forms merging into one nightmarish entity, engulfed him. Their words became an incantation, a dark chant that resonated through the cabin, invoking the evil spirit they served. As the ritual reached its crescendo, Henry's consciousness fragmented and his very essence was torn asunder. The cabin in the woods trembled and the air filled with an otherworldly malevolence as the ancient spirit descended upon its offering. In that horrifying moment, Henry Crane, the once successful businessman, became a sacrifice to the insatiable hunger of the cult and their malevolent deity. His life force was consumed, his very soul devoured, and the cabin in the woods bore witness to the unholy union of greed and darkness. The cult members, their faces etched with triumph, faded into the shadows, leaving behind a cabin tainted by the horrors of their ritual. The evil spirit, satiated for the moment, withdrew to the depths of the supernatural realm, leaving behind a chilling emptiness in its wake. Henry Crane, the successful businessman, was never seen again. His clients continued to prosper, their fortunes growing beyond measure, while the evil spirit reveled in the misery it had wrought. The cabin in the woods stood as a grim reminder of the price one could pay for the pursuit of wealth, a cautionary tale that whispered through the ages, reminding humanity of the sinister forces that could be unleashed when greed knows no bounds.